Hey guys, welcome back to the Beyond the Dojo podcast. I'm Lauren. I'm Jeremiah. And we actually had to take a week off uh, from podcasting because we were very busy. Well, yeah, we were both pretty very busy at the dojo last week doing some renovations. And because we've been doing that, um, it kind of made us want to switch topics uh, quite drastically this week. And we are going to talk about um, our dojo DIY, which is perfect because if there's two things I really love... It's business and being cheap. So this is going to be an awesome episode. I wish I knew that before we married. <laughs> it's been no money ever. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to kind of give a very brief background as to why we ended up where we did with uh, the Bushnell Dojo. Uh, my dojo um, was close to where we live. Um, <clears throat> and then why we ended up doing the way that we did. So I grew up in a local dojo um, that had changed locations multiple times, but um, we had been in the same location since before I had ever been there. And um, the the building was a little bit old. And um, in 2007, uh, a family actually donated um, basically renovations. We, um, <laughs> we, we distracted the sensei for the entire weekend, and all of us went up to this dojo and renovated this place in the entire weekend, and it was just transformed. It was beautiful. Um, the, ma- the major layout was pretty much the same, <clears throat> but we did a lot of stuff to it. So the last update to the building was 2007. Um, whenever we went to start the process of me taking over, managing, deciding what to do, um, I started to look into what it would cost to try to update this building um, because the the building actually used to be a mechanic shop and the entire building was actually split kind of down the middle. There was a big support wall um, and it really hindered um, like class size and what we were able to accomplish. Like if you remember the, the, the floor main was... The wall there that split the floor was a, a load-bearing wall so there yeah. was no way around it. Uh, we would consider putting a steel beam across it mm-hmm. but... After considering, you know, getting a professional to do that and all the costs, it just wasn't worth it with that building location. Yeah, uh, yeah. Square the, foot, everything. It just wasn't worth it. That floor was like really narrow. Yeah. And I, what I ended up doing is bringing in contractors. I brought in a couple of different contractors. One was going to, he told me the cost of taking on the built, the wall, putting up the beam, extending out the floor. He was a really, and he told me, he's like, I'm not a cheap contractor, right. but he, you know, he told he me exactly what. quality work though. He had yeah. Good, good reputation so and then i brought in some guys like for the ac like what it was going to cost um i don't remember the exact numbers but the renovations of that building were just estimated at over 40 grand and that wasn't including purchase or anything else um anyway long story short i ended up looking at an additional building in the process and that building was even older um it was so old that the realtor actually trusted me with my own key to be able to go into the building at any time i wanted and bring in contractors i think i brought in like eight different contractors to look at the building um to tell me cost of fixing the electrical fixing the ac fixing like fixing the paint um the same contractor that was going to do the renovations as far as the floor and the in the beam he told me what it would cost to do the floor and honestly the layout of this building was awesome because it was super open lots of windows there was a whole separate section i could have turned into a gym i mean it was legit parking totally sucked but it was right in the middle of downtown yeah Um, it would have been a cool spot yeah it was close to the tracks too because that would suck during like yeah class and everything else that was the blessing in disguise yeah that was the major downside was was those train tracks there and then it probably would have gotten hot with the with the windows um that totally fell through not going to go into the details but we did not get that building and it was actually a blessing because the building was just so old it would have probably cost more than the sixty thousand dollars that it was going to cost in renovations so it was much better to walk away so um this was like a year process of looking into different places to rent there was pretty much nowhere in our area to rent um nowhere to start start up a dojo i mean we were we knew we were going to be taking over but anyway it was a crazy process uh, about a year into it, um, it just so happened that there were two of my clients who both worked at the same location. They both worked at a local vet clinic, and they mentioned in passing um, <clears throat> to the owner of the vet clinic that I was looking for a place to go. Well, this vet clinic has been around for 25, almost 30 years, and they had recently pr- uh, built a new building right next door to their old building. Um and they were using their old building for large animals, which they only did a little bit of. Well, the vet mentioned in passing, hey, you know, if she needs a place to go, you can come here and just knock down the walls and do the dojo and fitness stuff there. So um, she told me that once, and then it kind of dawned on me again. I think Jeremiah and I discussed it, and then I reached back out to one of my clients. I was like, hey, um, do you think he was serious? And she was like, yeah, sure. So I contacted him, and I was like, hey, I want to know if you were actually serious about this or if this was something you mentioned in passing. And he said, 
no, I'm, I'm serious. So anyway, um, <clears throat> through all the business dealings and whatever, what ended up happening is he got offered us a great deal on rent. And we, we calculated out what we thought it was going to cost in renovations, which was pretty l- a low estimate. It actually ended up being double what we thought. Yeah. So if this was double what the contractors said on the other buildings probably would have been insane. Exactly. Just, even though we're not contractors, but um, yeah, we, but we did a lot of things to cut costs, you know, yeah, when we took the all the walls down and all the separators, we saved all the beam, all the wood, you know, two by fours. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we calculated it out and it was going to end up being cheaper for us to just renovate this building and pay the rent if we stay there five years versus going anywhere else. And that's, right. that's, that's what we went with. Um, so yeah, Jeremiah was saying we, we tore down the walls. You want to talk about, yeah, we tore down the walls, down the walls all the, uh, Different little offices had their own little separators, and we tore all the walls down. We pulled all the electrical out. Um, we had a company come. All, the electricians came in and pulled all the wiring and then redid the out, outside wiring and inside wiring also, right? Uh, it was actually just the inside. They had to do a big delete process where yeah. they got rid of tons of excess because yeah. Yeah. there was so much electronics in the building. Um, so they had to get rid of all of that, and there were – weird things wired in like yeah. random lights and stuff and <laughs> so we we were we had to pay obviously we had to pay professionals with electricity um and the good thing was is that we had students around that or were electric electrical um engineers and and were around construction they, they gave it us advice and i think that's probably one of the best things of, of a dojo community is that you have so many people to tap into and, and ask for advice mm-hmm. and in that case, um, I think it was Ken that kind of helped us out, and your dad also. No? No, that was with thought, our house. Huh? No, not that was with our house. Dude, I swear to you. Anyway, <laughs> no. never mind. See, we had so we've had, we had so, so many, many projects. We've had together. so many renovation projects happen, like we can't remember who helped us with what. <laughs> okay, so this is what happened. So we got in the dojo, and the first yeah. thing we did first night, we started tearing down walls. Right. So we were working like so we did this project in a month and a half, the main part of the project. Oh, absolutely. And we were working working some days it was like 10, 12, 14, up to 17 hour days. We worked on Christmas Eve. Yep. We were trying to get it done so that we could open for business at the end of January 2017. Yep. So we had knocked the walls down. They were like these cheapo like cardboard things. Yeah, yeah, and like, there were like nine walls in the building. So yeah. the whole building paneling is probably was cheap paneling, all the electrical that hang down, all that. Yeah. Pulled it all out. That was cool. Well, it was like, okay, so the whole building is like, what, 1,100 square feet, you think? I think so. I haven't actually measured it. Um, There were six rooms in the building. They were all tiny, and there was a bunch of walls. Three bathrooms. Are there three bathrooms? There's two bathrooms. There was the one in the back corner where everybody lines up. Two in the back corner. One went to the left and one to the right. The the one on the right was a sink sink and and had its own little thing. It just had a sink. It didn't have a toilet. Oh, that was a utility closet. Well, that was where the bad dogs go. Those were the bad dogs. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Anyways, they had we had we had to delete the plumbing. Um, we had one of our students help us with that. That was cool. Yeah, yeah. So um, we have a black belt that had been involved in the old dojo since before I was born, and um, he did all our plumbing for free, which was awesome because yeah. he removed five sinks, yep. a bathtub. Well, we removed the fixtures. All he had to do was delete the piping. We took care of. The did plumbing. we take the Did we take the we sinks take, off? We took the sinks out. Oh, did we? I don't think we did. I think no, he Garrett had to do I'm that. I'm sorry. God, dog. Dude, I'm yeah. I'm just going to shut up and just give me a wink when I can speak. Different project. <laughs> yeah, totally, man. Yeah. So, seriously, like we've had so many projects. It's been crazy. Um, So I think he came in and he did the he did the five sinks. There was one big tub in the middle. And that was fun because we took sledgehammers and just like attacked the tile yeah. on the outside of this thing. Yeah. We had some of our major volunteers at that time, Tyler and Calvin and Troy helped to, oh. they helped to take down giant cabinets. We had a, we have a back kennel that's still there. The kennel was filled with debris. There was just so much stuff that we took out of that building. The only thing that we salvaged, like Jeremiah was saying, was the two by fours. And we'll talk about that in a second. But yeah. we kept those off to the side. We did keep some cabinetry. Um, like, so we use the cubbies that yeah, the were cubby in the side. Yeah, yep. Yeah, so that we can have our kids use those. Um, so we tried to keep things that we thought were usable. Um, like, we did keep some, um, yeah, we kept hardware. The we kept all the, the, the benches. We kept the benches, uh, yeah. We kept some of the hardware from all the cabinetry, the door poles, the, the hinges. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the door stop things, we, we kept those. Mm-hmm. Uh, light switches and, and covering casings, we kept those. I did they, finally throw those away. <laughs> yeah, well, we kept them because they weren't. They weren't broken, you know? Yeah, I know. Yeah, we tried to salvage as many things as we could. Um, I did I did have money saved up, so we had money going into this project, but I didn't want it to get insane. Right. Um, you know, what was funny is prior to this, I had been applying. 
I was going to apply for a loan in order to be able to purchase a building. But then whenever we got this one to rent, I was like, well, I'll just pay for the renovations myself. So I did have to keep them under a certain number. What was funny in the long term is that I wouldn't have been able to get a loan because I had quit my job. Right. at the gym like a year and a half earlier i wouldn't have been approved for a loan so that was crazy how that turned out that we got this awesome place so yeah toward on the walls got the plumbing out electric and lights so the thing about the electric was that the the crew that came in to delete everything they overdid it so when they came in this is the pro only problem with contractors is like sometimes they make mistakes they have you have to be nice and call them back and this did happen a number of times we were trying to work our jobs jeremiah was still in gainesville I was in Bushnell. We'd have to work and then I'd have to come over to the new dojo and like be there for the contractors. And I had to go back and forth and like pass off classes to other people to teach so I could come and open the doors for contractors to come in. Like it was crazy. Oh. But um, the the electrical people had to come back because they had done overdone it so much that like our bathroom light didn't come on and the outside lights didn't come on. Right. But the guy that came back, he was like really irritated with the guys <laughs> that had been there previously. Um, but he did a good job. He got all that up and running for us. The other thing that we did with the electrical is. Um, I'll say this. Um, through experience, if you treat contractors with some respect and, and professionalism, dude, majority of the time they'll come back. They'll try to do the best. Man, they're, they're business people. They're trying to get your business get. So, mm -hmm. you know, unless they're horrible contractors or, or hacks, you know, generally, if you just speak with some respect and pref professionalism to them, you'll get what you want. Yeah. And, and the other thing, too, is like I was trying to be pretty particular, like I am a cheapo, but when it comes to contract work, I want a good contractor. Yeah, Someone's exactly. going to actually do decent work. Um, pay, you get what you pay for. Yeah, basically. And I did know that. So I brought in this good company. Honestly, we did not pay that much for the electrical work. And we got LED lights put in yeah. on the main floor. These are like they look like fl fluorescents, but they're actually LEDs. Yeah. And we've been in business for two and a half years. Nothing has ever gone out on the floor. Um, I'm not sure if it's cheaper to replace, but I know that our electric bill is lower because of it. Yeah. Um, I think it cost us, I don't know, 20 or $40 more per unit. And there's probably like eight. Are there only eight lights? I thought there was it's more eight. than that. I don't know. But, but it honestly, it, like in the long term, it was a, it was a great investment. So, yeah. um, yeah, so we got the, that fixed up. We have the drop ceiling installed. Yeah. So before we did the drop ceiling, we had to get the insulation. Yeah. Oh my God. All right. But. So here was the other thing. Whenever we were getting our materials, we were having some trouble with delivery. So the first thing that was, that was an issue. Um, we'll talk about the floor in just a second. Cause that's the most important part, but we had an issue with the, the, um, wood being delivered for the floor. Yeah. They brought, uh, our first pallet of wood from a local Lowe's and, um, they said that that was everything and it wasn't yeah. everything. It wasn't even half of the plywood. And I was flipping out and it took like two days to get them back out there to bring me the rest of the plywood like it wasn't even in their system anymore they just marked it off as if they had given it to us so yeah it was crazy i just oh my gosh and like if i wasn't ready to have a heart attack already i was ready at that point so i already had these this problem these problems with this lowe's not delivering our stuff and they did finally bring it out um well, then we had to order ceiling insulation. Whenever Jeremiah was ripping down the old drop ceiling, which oh, was man. like packed together. You want to talk about the old drop ceiling? Oh, no. You do. <laughs> I don't talk about it. Oh. There was, um, so this is a vet clinic. They had food in there for the animals and whatever. There was lots of rat crap. And all kinds of crazy stuff up in the right. ceiling. Well, you got to also think how old the building is. It was made in the 60s or 70s. Mm -hmm. um, it was a drive through liquor store before this. Yeah, it was a liquor it was store. A, it was a vet office. I mean, you know, that's just part of the old house, old buildings. It's, you're going to have rat poop and all that. It was disgusting. We took care of it. We put new insulation in. Had the guy put new drop ceiling in. Sealed it up. We're good to go. Yeah, so, so the insulation. So when I got the insulation... This is the story I was going to tell. So we went to get the insulation from the same Lowe's and they put it in the back of my mom's truck. Yeah. And I looked at it and I'm like, that's not put in there very securely. Don't you need to strap that down? They're like, no, it's too heavy. It's fine. So we're driving down Highway 50, which is like one of the main kind of like central highways in uh, Florida, east to west. And um, all of a sudden, <laughs> the giant, giant, I mean, roll of ceiling insulation, which is extremely thick, mind you. Uh, flies off the back of the truck in the middle of the highway. Thank God there was not a car very close behind us. So my mom had to stop on the side of the road, and we're in the middle of nowhere. And I had to sprint down the highway and tire flip this bad boy off of the road. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
and figure out how to get it back up on the truck before yeah. I got killed. It was, oh my gosh. Yeah, that was... Um, Needless to say, we do majority of our, our home improvement shopping at Home Depot now. Yeah, we literally do not go to Lowe's anymore. Sorry, Lowe's. Uh, that yeah. made me... That was that was the final straw. Yeah, was, we had some horrible experiences. <clears throat> yes. So, so anyway, so yes, after we finally got that to the dojo, we okay. did install all of our own stuff. So we were like learning this as we went. Um, I was learning about like pricing <laughs> things. Yeah. I was, we were learning how to actually do a lot of these projects. We learned how to actually install ceiling insulation. Thank, thank God for a good friend, Mike Purcell, who, yeah. who was a, a, you know, a contractor and he, he knew how to do things and he, man, we leaned on him to come up. He came down one day and, and he put the frame into it for a floor down. He helped us put the, the sub floor down and got us started on the, the flooring. Yeah. Well, let's, let me finish with the ceiling real quick because yeah, I want to talk about bad. the floor in, in detail. So with the ceiling, just getting someone to come and do the drop ceiling, getting a contractor, like that was another big thing. It's like no one does drop ceilings. I could not find anyone to do a drop ceiling and we couldn't figure out how to do it. I did finally find someone and there were some issues with it after the fact. Not the, not the ceiling, but the guy. But anyway. <laughs> well, you know, that's the thing is just, I don't know, man. Subcontractors, contractors, you know, construction you just got to deal with the certain people certain kind of people yeah. sometimes you deal with some really up, upstanding people and you, sometimes you deal with people that you just think there's a screw loose because they they don't operate like a professional or a business they just kind of do as they please when they please and how they please mm -hmm. but i will give him this he did a heck of a job on the ceiling oh yeah the ceiling looks great Dude, the ceiling is amazing it's it's gridded out it's a beautiful ceiling it's taking forever but it's it's still yeah. looks good it's good he's happy <laughs> we're happy yeah i mean just be real yeah so all right so you want to talk about all the components that went into the floor because it wasn't it's not I didn't know how in, de in depth this goes. I, I was very specific that I wanted a good floor yeah. when we got here. So we went like, this was the most expensive part of the entire renovation. All right. So we took all the two by fours that we saved and we, we basically ripped them in half. Mm -hmm. And we built a grid that I think was like three by three, three foot by three foot across the entire floor and tap condom into the concrete. They were four by eight. Four by eight. And, because it yeah, went four, right underneath it. Yeah, four then. four by eight. I'm sorry, four by eight across the floor, and we we tap con them into the um the concrete. But underneath that, underneath that was a a vapor barrier and no, just the vapor barrier. Just the vapor barrier underneath that one. Yeah, and then we put sub flooring in, which was three quarter inch plywood, um, and that one had to be staggered off a little bit, mm -hmm. and. That had the, the the seams actually match the two by twos, which is why you guys did it the way that you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, the seams match on the two by two four uh, frame, but you know, basically we had to split the two by four with each of the uh, plywood, mm -hmm. and that was you know. Did you get, did we do tongue and groove? We did tongue and groove. Yeah, um, yeah, we had it. It was plywood? tongue and groove, so we just laid over the top. Yeah. Okay. So we did that, and then after that was another. Was that squishy barrier? Yeah, right? it was that squishy under laminate that you put under like um, laminate flooring. Yeah. Or, or actually that, that Pergo snap together flooring. Yeah. And then we put the snap together flooring on it. After that, we put the, what's that, the baseboard. And that was it. Oh yeah, we did it. We did the um, piece, like, it was like, it was like four foot sections on the baseboard. Yeah. It was that stuff you glue to the wall. You yeah. Like that office that. rubberized baseboard stuff. They only sold it in like really short things, which I mean, it ended up costing us more, but it's because I wanted that color because yeah. the dojo was really light. Yeah. Um, well, the reason I wanted to talk about the floor is because there's so many hidden costs in certain things. Like whenever you're building something, yeah. I don't think you always realize like just a box of Tapcons, like it's not cheap to buy a box of Tapcons. So when you're like 16 bucks, 16 bucks, something like that. I think it was more than that. But I mean, every, all that stuff ends up adding up and like yeah. even buying that flooring, like that stuff to cover the floor. I think it cost me a couple hundred dollars just for like the vapor barrier and then yeah. another couple hundred dollars for the, for the for the squishy stuff. stuff yeah and then not not to mention how much the actual floor costs which are i think i think our floor is beautiful i yeah, think our floor that floor is beautiful <laughs> but you know that's the thing though you know let's be real that was a what a dollar 25 cents per square on your flooring so it there was a deal and uh i think it was a little bit closer to two dollars a square foot originally and then it's the cell brought it back down mm -hmm. I'm. Not, I think originally it was higher than that, and it was a little bit under two dollars a square foot. Okay, but dude. Yeah. 
I mean, it's really good. Yeah, and we get we, that was a hell of a bargain. Let's be real. Well, and it was it was a special order, so I do have some concern that we might not ever find them again if we needed it. But we've got a few extra pieces, so yeah. hopefully we don't ever need it again. Hopefully. And the other thing too is like because the building is old, like there's that one section back and underneath the bag near the Makiwara where the floor sinks in. Yeah, we've had a couple of issues with that, so um, it just makes the top of the floor do weird things because the floor sinks down. So we've had to make some adjustments. To the floor well, yeah, down. with that flooring too, you know, if you get you let humidity come in the room. It will bubble up. That flooring will swell, and the floor will, will kind of bow. Mm -hmm. uh, what we did was we took an extra like quarter inch off of each edge, yeah, and allowed that floor when it needed to swell up that it had a little bit of room to stretch out, yeah, and it it hasn't swollen up since. Well, it's crazy because that corner had it was like it was bowing up like sideways yeah. between the lengthwise, yeah. And then when we went on our honeymoon and came back, the dojo hadn't been used that much. And there was a huge flipping bubble yeah. on that. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's, that's I was when we had freaking to, out. That's when we had to cut that edge. And once we cut the edge, it was yeah. good to go. We haven't had an issue since since then. No, I think I think it may have been like one bubble or something, but it it's it was just we have just enough space now for it to slide. Like there's a couple of spots where it will ex it'll slide some if it's yeah. not expanded out. But I would rather have those teeny tiny gaps in just those couple of areas than having it bow up. The problem with the old dojo was that um, it wasn't shimmed in, yeah. so we were sliding on the laminate flooring. It would actually un un unlatch itself. Unlatch itself and go, yeah. <laughs> And kids were like cutting their feet on the floor and stuff. So there was a lot of specific things I wanted. I was a little bit anal about some of this stuff. But dude, these contractors and Jeremiah and Mike like did such amazing work in this place. Like I I did a lot, but they did all the hard labor and like the, the way that it turned out was just like absolutely fabulous. We went and used in the mirrors we got where uh we went to mirrors.com. Yeah, I think it was I think it was, it was a really good price. I mean six hundred, I think. So what we actually did is um, we did two orders because we did one for my dojo and one for your dojo. So we had moved Jeremiah into his new location in what, 2016? Yeah. Gosh, yeah, earlier that year. That's why we're getting our stuff, all of our stuff yeah. fixed up. So early 2016, we had moved Jeremiah into a new place. And then by the end of 2016, we were renovating my dojo. So we got mirrors for both places at the same time because these guys actually drove down from like somewhere in the northeast. Yeah, United it's like States. you go offline, you order the thing, and then they just send whoever's nearest to you yeah well they they, they don't charge you shipping right. and i think the mirrors were like 350 a piece and we got two mirrors and you got two mirrors right. um but they're huge and oh my gosh at first so i i what eight um uh, another five it might be like six by eight six by eight yeah they were really tall, really yeah. big when they started putting them in jeremiah's dojo it's a good thing i was sitting right there so i remember i you were working so i went up to your dojo yeah. and let them in and they started putting them in and i was i think i um i realized how big they were and i was like oh my gosh can you drop them lower because they were going to put them like two feet off the ground yeah and so like they were in the middle of preparing ready to go and whatever and i had to have them drop it down because it was just they're, they were just giant, gigantic. Yeah, and I've been reflecting nothing but the ceiling and the wall. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, they dropped it down to like one foot from the floor. But then they did art mirrors too. And thank God they have not been broken yet. They're pretty durable mirrors. Yeah, they are kids durable. Run, kids run into them and stuff. And I want to smack them upside the head. Dodgeballs, <laughs> everything. And then they, they, they get... They get a little rough. That was totally worth it. But three fifty a mirror, I didn't think that was that bad of a price. Right. We came and installed them. We didn't pay for shipping. It's just that it took a few weeks for them to get there because they had to schedule the drive and yeah. it had to be worth it's, their It's drive. worth the wait. Just the money you save is worth the wait. Because I was, I was talking to local people. They're talking about six hundred a mirror. Yeah, no. And it was almost half the price. And I was like, you got to be kidding me, dude. Yeah. So. Um, so we talked about seating. Um, yeah. So the problem, well, you can call it a problem. You can call it a blessing. Not really sure. Um, so our lobby is very small, yeah. and we have uh, a long bench, a church pew, and a short bench that people use to sit in. They're not very comfortable. So uh, speaking of DUI, I have, I have been making um, uh, homemade seat cushions. <laughs> I've been sewing them out of T-shirts. Um, but uh, they don't have a huge view of the floor, but it's more than we had at the previous dojo. At the previous dojo, um, there was just like two doorways in that separating wall. So you really couldn't see on the floor. Here we have like the majority of or half, about half the floor is obstructed. If you stand right in the middle and look out, like half the floor is obstructed. I don't know. You, you can see way more now. Um, so we've got that seating there and we're going to eventually add more, yeah. but we Pretty well, much just we were fortunate we that, that the church pew was there, the other bench was there, and we just used what was there. Um, I will say this, though. I, I bought a church pew for my dojo. Mm -hmm. It's 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. It sits like 10 people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't go wrong. Yeah. 
And if, you know, a lot of these churches, you find one that a church renovating, you probably get it for free. Yeah, they're throwing them out. They're throwing them away, you know, and it's, I mean, they're not, I mean, they might be have ugly material and stuff, but yeah, it's better than paying $10 a folding chair, $5, $8 a folding chair, something like that. Yeah. Ridiculous. I mean, and, and if it's got cloth on it, you want to keep it clean. Ours, mine doesn't have cloth. Jeremiah's does, but yours is pretty clean. Yeah. Um, obviously you have to keep that clean, but on it, it's worth the trade off of just keeping it clean every now and then oh, yeah. versus having oh, to yeah. buy other stuff. So kind of the main thing is like, we really tried to reuse everything that we could from the, Absolutely. from the vet clinic as we transform well, it into the dojo. Our, pers- our, our attitude towards it is we're, we're getting a business. Everybody knows we're beginning a business. We're young. You know, we don't have to have fancy things right away. Mm-hmm. We have what works yeah. and what's, what's you know, available and, and affordable. Yeah. And if you have that mindset, dude, your overhead stays low. You don't have such a pinch at the end of the month. Yeah, well, the other beautiful thing is, like, you're opening a dojo. What equipment do you need? You really don't need anything. Right. It's not like opening a gym. Like, I, Jeremiah and I were just talking about this. I've done research into, like, people opening gyms, and they go so into debt trying to open a gym. You do not want to do that, especially in, like, so a lot of people who opened gyms earlier in the 2000s, they all, like, lost their gyms in 2009 when the economy crashed. Yeah. So the last thing you want is to have a crap ton of debt and have to worry about, like, are people going to come to my gym or not? Is the economy going to crash? I mean, if that's your thing, fine, go for it. But um, everyone, I, everyone I've heard of, they're like, have the money yourself. Do not go into debt if you can help it. And that's that's one thing that was beautiful. I'll go ahead and say this. I'm not going to disclose how much our rent is, but I had to invest $12,000 to get our dojo started. That included first and last month's, or no, it included a deposit and first month's rent mm-hmm. and included some software that we should not have invested in. <laughs> mm-hmm. But outside of that, I mean, that was the total of all of those renovations. Um and we haven't even talked about the training room, which I'm not going to talk about too much. Our training room is a is a separate piece of the dojo. It's like an add-on. Um, it's where I have all my workout equipment. I wanted it to be separate from the rest of the dojo because I felt like having equipment, training equipment on the dojo floor, like kills the the Zen vibe. So I, I didn't want it. I didn't want it out there. So um, I have this nice little extra space. It is very small. Um, it was a groomer's room. Um, and we had to take out a sink out of there. We actually just recently, like a couple weeks ago, we're, we were finally able to take out. Yeah, we took out the bathtub, and the same guy that did our plumbing came this past Friday and and ca- capped off that plumbing for us. So we've got some more space there, but it's a nice little setup. Um, did take I, I did have some equipment. Had to invest in a little bit more just to be able to have that small studio space to be able to train my clients. But overall, the space has just been wonderful. So um, moral of the story is uh, if you are starting a dojo or if you need to do renovations, dude, try to do it yourself like as as much as you can because, well, I say that. If you can learn quickly and you are somewhat crafty, try to do it yourself because it will definitely save you some money. Plus, you have the pride in knowing like it got done. And plus, we were able to bust our natural tails to get it done and get it done in the time frame that we wanted versus having to wait on somebody else. Yeah, I'll say that we're, we're pretty – Two practical people that are hands on a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And I think we take that for for granted sometimes. Yeah. I'll say this. If you know you can't do the work yourself and you're going to question the quality and the worth of the time spent, then hire somebody mm-hmm. and go into debt. Because if you do it yourself, you're going to have to hire someone to fix your problems. Yeah, well, don't go into debt. Have the capital and pay for it yourself. Yeah, uh, pay for the person to do it if you yeah, can help. Yes, it. ideally. I'm just ideally. saying though. Um, you know, don't feel like you have to do the DIY stuff. I just think make sure you know what you can and cannot do before you jump into it. I was hesitant to do a lot of things, uh, but I was fortunate to have a friend that I could call many times, anytime, any anywhere, and he would give me a good answer. Yeah. And sometimes he'd tell me, "Get a professional." Yeah. You know, if that's the advice, follow it. <laughs> yeah absolutely so cool all right so last bit here what are you working on uh, i'm working on extension of my elbow and my knee um mm, decided that maybe i need to do some different kind of drills instead of just uh step and punch step and punch step and punch and just mm-hmm. kind of get mundane with it so i'm working on step and punch uh jab so oizuki kizamizuki and um just kind of it, for me, it was the idea that I step and punch, and then when I recall to do the jab, that I, I can extend my knee and elbow, again, 
And it's somewhat more obvious to me. I don't know why. So I've yeah. been practicing that. Sweet. How about you? Uh, working on Gion. Um, today I focused on the uh, rising block reverse punch and rising block Oizuki section. Um, trying to make sure my hands are coordinated correctly. Um, starting to feel a little bit more confident about the smoothness in my step. Like I mentioned, I had that weird, I have this weird hiccup. I feel a little bit better about it now. Um, trying to be better about coordinating like the proper time to rotate my, as my front foot becomes my back foot, rotating it out at the right time to make sure I'm driving, making sure all those joints are lined up. I feel like I just get kind of hic hic hiccuped, get stuck or well, whatever. I get stuck in different places. Um, so all of that stuff, just basically smoothing out that section. And then I'm still kind of working on the rotations that I mentioned that we laughed at me for because it's basically like the second ki in hand showed on, but the, uh, the turning into the, uh, manji okay. Working on that section also. Yeah. I don't mean to pick it too, but it... whatever, man. Okay. It just doesn't feel the same. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh yeah. All right. Okay, well, hopefully that gave you guys some ideas if you're going to build your own dojo or if you're going to steal somebody else's or whatever. I mean, they'll do that, but you know what you I mean. Know. Whatever. <laughs> whatever floats you about. Whatever you're doing. Anyway, hopefully that gives you some ideas for DIY stuff. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. If you want to see the pictures of all of this crap that we're talking about, you can actually go onto my Facebook page, um, Shotokan Karate and Human Performance. All the pictures are there. There should be an album somewhere somewhere on there with actually timestamps of when we did certain projects. Um, or also on Instagram, uh, Shotokan KHP, go way, way back to when I first established the page. And you can see a lot of our renovation projects from before we opened the dojo. Um, Jeremiah is Shotokan Karate Family Fitness on Instagram currently. I don't have any pictures, so don't worry about it. He doesn't it. have any pictures of any of that stuff. No. Yeah, pictures of, like, your mirrors. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> and then uh, I also have uh, my my training uh, Instagram is Lauren Hart Athletics. And we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.